another question online. Uh, so the, when do we become harsh on kuffar and when should we be nice to them? Okay, so when should we be harsh to the kuffar and when should we be, would be nice to them? There is you know, a difference when you're talking to you know, the society in general compared to when you're talking to an individual specifically. And there's a difference between when you're talking to the one in the context of da'wah and when you're talking to them in the context of jihad. So if you are talking to society in general forbidding the shirk and forbidding the munkar of the society, you should be harsh. The way the Prophet ﷺ, he was harsh. He said to them, in general, as a society, You and what you worship of Allah is fuel for the hellfire. He said, In general, all those people who cheat in the markets, they are cursed. You know, uh, they are the cursed. So he was harsh with them. And harsh against the munkar, in general. Because you're not addressing a particular person, you're addressing the people in general. But if you're giving da'wah to one person individually, one to one, then you should be gentle with them. Speak to them in the best way. Allah Subhanahu wa says what? وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالْلِتِيهِ أَحْسَن Debate with them in the better way, in the best manner. Using the best words. And he said, don't debate with the Jews or Christians, with the people of the book, except in the best manner, using the best words. And he also said, however, except for the oppressor among them. So some of those uh, you know, people who, who you're, even when you're giving da'wah to them, they transgress. They start to oppress, they go beyond the limits. They start to insult Allah, or insult the Messenger. You don't, you're no longer kind and gentle anymore. It's not, okay, don't worry, I forgive you. At that time, you have to take a different stance. You have to take a different approach. So the one who is the oppressor, or someone who's only interested in attacking and insulting, and not really interested in listening at all. When that becomes clear from him, then you can be harsh with him. You know? But otherwise, if you're giving him da'wah, you should be gentle and use the best words in the best manner. And also, in the context of jihad, okay, you don't be gentle with them. You be harsh. He also said to fight the mushrikeen and let them find in you ghilza. Let them find that we knew the harshness. This verse of the Quran. Okay? When, um, when the mushrikeen were gloating and boasting about their, you know, um, their small victory, you could call it, in Uhud. Okay? After Uhud, when the Muslims they retreated up the mountain. And Abu Sufyan at that time, he was not Muslim. He started to call out publicly and saying, look, is there, Abu, is there Muhammad? Is he alive? Is Abu Bakr? Is he alive? And the Muslims were silent. And he started to gloat. And he started to, he started to say that, uh, that what? You know, uh, he said that the, um, what did he say? He said, this is one, one each. He said, one all. This is in return for Badr. Because, you know, you won Badr, now we have victory. We, we got Uhud. So he's saying, look, this is one for the other one. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say to him? What did he say to Umar beside him? Did he say to Umar, be, take ease on him, be gentle with them? No, he said, are you not going to reply to him? Are you not going to say something back? I mean, you can't allow them to have this boasting in the time of war, this war propaganda, psychological warfare, and you don't respond. You're supposed to respond, and respond with something even better. Okay? So he said to Amr, say to him, say to him, it's not equal. Okay, it's not equal, because our dead are in Jannah, your dead are in Hellfire. Okay? So he defeated him. He said to him, we well, look, we, are, we have Uzza and you have no Uzza. I mean, you have no victory today, you have no dignity or honor, but they have Uzza, they, they, they idol called Uzza. So he said to Umar, say to him, look, Allah Mawlana wala Mawla lakum. He said, Allah is our Mawlana, you have no Mawla, you have no protector. So this is the time in the war, propaganda, the psychological warfare, you're harsh with them. Yeah, you're harsh with them. Some of the journalists ask, look, why does uh, Dawla show them these beheadings? Okay. Why did they show these beheadings? He said, isn't that going to give bad image for them and make everybody you know, uh, afraid and make everybody think that they're just you know, trying to kill everybody? I said, obviously, look, you need to understand, they're at war. There are people trying to kill them. So clearly, they are trying to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. Those people that are trying to kill them, deter them, maybe think that maybe, look, maybe it's not a good idea to fight them. Okay? So you can't just say, look, oh, it's only about da'wah. There is something called war, psychological warfare as well. Okay? In the time of war, when the enemy is trying to kill you, you don't show them a picture to the enemy and say, don't worry, Mr. Kafir, we are, we are soft kittens at the end of the day, we don't fight back. You know, we, we, we are so gentle and nice and loving and peaceful that we don't fight. You don't show that image. No, you say to them, we, you know, we will slaughter you. That's the image that you say to them. That's the image you want to show to them. 
Khalid bin Walid, you know, when he was receiving um, uh, somebody from the, the Romans, he said to the Muslims, he said, take the dead bodies and pretend as if you're eating them. So when the messenger came, he thought, what's going on? Who are these Muslims? <laughs> you know? And when he came to, uh, when this came to negotiations with Khalid bin Walid, the Romans said, look, we'll give you X and X so much booty if you just go away. Turn, turn around and go back. He said, we didn't come here for your money. He said, Muslims, we like to drink blood. And we heard that you Romans have the most tastiest blood. <laughs> yeah, strike fear in their hearts. Make them feel like these people are not going to leave us. They're not going to let us go. So in the time of war, you're not trying to put the enemy at ease. Don't worry, Mr. Enemy. No, at the time of war, you want the enemy to be afraid. You want the enemy to be shaking. And I think the world is shaking at the moment. So clearly, you know, they are winning some kind of propaganda war, whatever the case may be. Whatever people may think about it or not, they're winning certain propaganda wars, but by their, by their you know, uh, policy.